I'll say it again. Boom! Last night's show was by far the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, I feel, I think I pissed my pants last night. Last night's show was epic. Like, little boy Steve was sitting, at, at, like, in his glory yesterday. If anybody missed it, I had iconic legends, rock and roll Hall of Fame type legends, like MC Search, and then I surprised MC Search with DMC from Run DMC. It was the dopest show I've ever done. I didn't even, like, I couldn't even talk. I just let them talk. I didn't have to do anything. It was the coolest thing I've ever, ever experienced in my life. I tried to explain it to my mother who they were. My mom's a big Wayne. I said, Mom, it was like, if Wayne Newton, like, because she's a big Wayne Newton fan. I said, Mom, if Wayne Newton and, and John Lennon came on the show, like, that's how exciting it was for me yesterday. So awesome. They, those are the two as nicest people on the planet. I have a clip of uh, shocking MC Search surprising him with DMC because he had no idea. We're going to play that clip later. Um, I'm home chilling day 70 something of I don't know what the hell's going on. It's so confusing, so weird, but we're dealing with it. There's, hopefully this show is helping you deal with it. I got new headphones. I went. I can't believe Best Buy is closed. Oh my God! You think that would be essential? Wine and wine and liquor stores are open, but Best Buy is closed. If your computer breaks, you're fucked. If your TV breaks, you're fucked. So anyway, with that being said, two of the coolest people on the planet, two of my best friends, two people I love dearly from the bottom of my heart, are waiting online right now. First, I'd like to introduce the owner of Bright Shot, one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, Mr. Roy McDonald. I can't, I can't, I can't hear Roy, Noah. Hold on. Give us a sec. Try it again. Nope, nothing. Can't hear Roy. We're still working out the kinks, everybody. I apologize. Roy, hold on. Wait, just one second. We can't, can't hear you. So, um, I'm, no, I'm sure. Roy, take out the headphones. Okay. Well, we'll wait for Roy. And the other person that's waiting on is uh, an actor, theater, TV, movies he's a creative genius he's a fucking wonderful human being star for mall rats and clerks mr brian o'halloran what's up what's up mommy we got where roy's uh having a little uh technical issue that. wait mr well, roy are you there? Uh, can you hear me now yeah. there he is okay yeah all right <laughs> cheers, waiting, everybody cheers <laughs> yeah. funny i'm drinking wine out of a worsteiner glass nice <laughs> Nothing yet. Yeah. Man, I just made some short ribs today with some potatoes and carrots. It was fucking, it was ridiculous. Nice. Out of this whole experience, we're all going to become chefs. And True. really overweight. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But uh, no, I know uh, I have a buddy that comes over on Saturdays. He brings like wine and I'll cook dinner and we have a mandate. That's the new thing. Because uh, how, how, how are you going to, how are you supposed to date after this? Date what? You know, Blood yeah. tank, <laughs> right? How, how do you like? How do you like go around someone you don't know and then make something? Try to make something happen. Sex, forget about it. Condoms again. That's it. <laughs> so what's that anyway? Yeah, I know you don't have to worry about that. You're sniffing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't have to worry about sex. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Jesus, poor man. But how cool is this little uh, platform? It's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy StreamYard. I, I use StreamYard for uh, for my uh, podcast and Streamcast the O'Hollerant. And uh, it's I like really, that name. Yeah, the O'Hollerant uh, is uh, something that Kevin had suggested to me a while ago, and uh, I finally got uh, something to put up and start to interview some guests myself. And um, hopefully, uh, people will catch on. They can go to the O'Hollerant on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and find out more stuff. I'll have more shows coming up. Yeah. Soon. So speaking of Kevin, what's the latest news? What's going on? You know, uh, he's uh, working, you know, he just got done doing the Jay and Silent Bob Reboot Roadshow Tour. So right now he's uh, at, back at home in L.A. and he's hopefully working on the new Clerks 3. And uh, then we go on to a Mallrats, uh, you know, movie as well. So that's, hoping- that's awesome. so just, exciting. My son and I just watched that uh, that movie, the uh, the reboot of Jay and Silent Bob. A lot we of fun. Thought, like, yeah, you know, while we were, you know, you know, while we were at, uh, you know, sequestered. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it was fun. It, it's good that the uh, the uh, self isolation is forcing people to watch. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched yeah. 
the peanut butter the film though that's cool yeah, yeah. I, did anybody watch the peanut butter falcon i have not oh it's, it's, yeah it's with jake gyllenhaal who i'm not a big fan of but the movie's actually really good what's right it on. called the peanut butter falcon yeah really? it's, it's, it's a really really good movie oh funny okay like, it's, it's heartwarming it's funny it's got a little bit of an adventure going on, buddy kind of thing going on. I don't want to ruin it, but um, it's uh, it's really good. I bet I I I'm getting such shit because of, uh, it's seven o'clock. We all have a McCoy Zoom. Everybody that hangs down at the bar, and I I I made the I made the mistake of recommending that that that, that the movie that's on Netflix right now called Coffee and Kareem. Right. So it stars that guy from Clerks. I met Clerks. Um. Yeah, we have the, the, the office. <laughs> yeah, the office. He was on the office in the Hangover. He's the guy who pulled his tooth out. Okay. Um, and, and he plays like sort of a wimpy cop. His name is James Coffee, which is also the name of my uncle that died. But um, and, and he's he's married. He's he's dating this black woman, and her thirteen year old son who wants to be a thug catches them having sex, and it starts off with this crazy adventure. Because uh, and I think it's hysterical. I watched it twice. I thought it was a great movie. And I, you know, I, I made a suggestion to about eight people on the Zoom, and nobody liked it. So every single day that I go <laughs> on this Zoom, somebody has to bring up coffee and cream. I stand by my movies. That that's a good movie. I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's what, I think that's the thing to do now is just to to recommend stuff to other people because that's all we're doing, right? Is watching Netflix and Hulu. And I we watched uh, the Tiger King. We watched Ozark. We wa we're watching Killing Eve on Hulu. We watch Mrs. America. I mean, it's just so much TV, man, and films. You know, Brian, what, 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 are you, what are you doing to deal with this new, brave new world we're in? What have I been doing? You know, I've been uh, setting up these kind of things. You know, I've been doing a lot of uh, be being on other people's streamcasts. I'm starting up my streamcast and, you know, building out my kind of uh, media room into a studio kind of thing. I mean, I could switch to this separate camera here and just, you know, show you like, you know, I have oh. a couple of lights. Oh, wow. Nice, nice. setup. Uh, nice. Got some color. And then I got my green screen over there. You could be anywhere in the world. Yeah, as a matter of fact, here, let me just show you real quick. I'm pretty safe, and I've been able to get around pretty good because I uh, hang on a second. I'm over. Uh, Is that your house? <laughs> my Dr. Strange's house. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, then, you know, doing my thing. Yeah. Well, how about this? What are the guys on the McCoy's uh, chat? Great about, and what about uh, knowing Doctor Strange is you can travel anywhere you want and any time. No so one of the guys from the McCoys uh, Zoom actually has a, a shot of the bar, so it looks like he's sitting at the bar. Nice, oh, that's funny. I was like, yeah, gee, it's Scottish Rob, right? So I'm oh, like, really? I'm like, yo, dude, how, how'd you get in the fucking bar? <laughs> You're back, and then he moved, and you can see the green screen kind of. <laughs> so yeah. Hey, yeah. I got a question for Brian. When sure. We come back, when we come back from this, are you going to have like different rules? Because you meet a lot of people that are your fans, and they come up to you and they they, they want to shake your hand and you know take a picture. Yeah. So I think, that, yeah, I think we're getting rid of shaking hands. I think um I think uh, we're going to go you know a Asian style and just the bow with the nod kind of thing, or <laughs> or just your your normal neighborhood. What's up? You know the chuck of the head. What's up? Yeah, I, th I think I think it's just you get on your knees and you're like. Ugh. <laughs> But it is, it is you know, because you do photo ops with fans and stuff like that, and they always want to, you know, put their arm around you. Oh, sure. It's going to be kind of weird that way. It's going to be more standing next to each other. And um, I don't know, it just, you know, now's the time to invest in the chemical companies that are making hand sanitizer. Yeah. Well, anything, yeah. anything that's disinfectant based. So uh, I know that there's a bunch of things I'm working on right now. Uh, a bunch of friends of mine in the theater group were, were uh we're going to do a live stream of a of a play reading of a comedy. Uh, that's going to be a week from today, Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be start promoting that tomorrow. So we've been in rehearsals this past week from seven until like eight thirty at night through Zoom, and uh, we're going to do this in, in very funny comedy uh, play, uh, stage reading, and uh, people can ch uh, check in on Facebook to listen. You'll be hearing more. I guess you could still do table reads with Zoom, right? Because why not? 
you know? Exactly, exactly. And then um, as far as conventions go, I know I'm working with a few of them now, and my agent's working with a few of them now, to do virtual conventions uh, where you'll get kind of personal time like this with a, with a fan. Uh, they'll be able to get autographs signed. They'll pick from a menu, and right. then I, and then they'll get mailed in the following weeks their, their autographs. You know, you guys, I, I, John Cleese is doing that now. He's, yeah. uh, he's been advertising it, I think, on Instagram or one of them, where he says, you know, if you want to – talk to me and ask me like five minutes worth of questions and then, yeah. you know, uh, you know, get an autograph or something like that. You know, he does it. So yeah, pretty interesting. that's pretty much how it's going to be going. You know, yeah. you know, you know what would help you, Brian is uh, wearing the, the new aftershock XL face masks that are in <laughs> really? Noah. You want to show? Look, wow. Look nice. at that. Uh, uh, a company called party bib. That's uh, friends with Noah made them for me, and I'm going to be giving them out. If you go to my YouTube channel, Grillo's After Shock XL, and subscribe and screenshot it, one day next week I'm going to pick a bunch of people to get a free uh, Grillo's After Shock XL face mask. Nice. Hey, Thanks to the people man. over at Party Bib. Look at you caring for the people's they well-being. Look good. Yeah, no, they Ooh. came out great. Partybibs.com, they're a great bunch of people. I thank them so much. They also do custom T-shirts and shit like that if you want to go on their website and check out what they do. But they're donating all these masks. Wow. To, um, uh, all different various charities and hospitals and stuff. So um, they, they they wanted to know if I wanted one. I went, hell yeah, I do. That's so they made me cool. 20. They're, already, they're in the mail. They're coming this week. I'm surprised they just didn't print the lower half of your face so that everybody <laughs> could wear your coat. Yeah, I think you, they should do that for you because you have such a distinct lower half of your face. <laughs> that, like that, yeah, cartoon, the, your, 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 your goatee is just so famous. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, all right. So yesterday, I don't know if you guys got a chance to watch or whatever, but I, I interviewed two iconic Hip hop stars, uh, MC Search, who from Third Base, who is personally one of my favorite rappers, MCs that ever came across this green earth, and then of course DMC, who is larger than life to me because like everything about Run DMC is just like uh, everything about the '80s. It just like walked this way, blew me away. That's when I first started really listening to them, and I, I got to interview Search, but I didn't tell Search that DMC is calling in. So I want to play a clip uh, of what happened last night because it was one of the coolest moments of my life. Go ahead, cool. Noah. You know, Gangstar is incredible. They're always going to be incredible. So to hear Primo beats today, DJ Premier beats over that, it's incredible. Kendrick Lamar is incredible. Joey Badass. There's a kid right up the block from you in Coney Island. Speak it up. Oh! <laughs> what's up? What's up? Damn. What? what? <laughs> Yo, dude, look what I'm wearing. Ha <laughs> license to ill. No. What is that? I got a big white, white Cadillac oh, Seville and written right on the right side of reads dress, dress to, kill. to kill. What's going on? Happy birthday. Wow. Yeah, man. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How are you, D? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm good, man. Yo, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, Steve was like, yo, he said, yo, you have to, he said, you have to come on. I'm not going to tell him. We're going to surprise Wow. Him. Nice, brother. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. he's uh, Daryl's a sweet guy, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. He's yeah. like really genuinely like a, a nice, nice person. So is Search. So is Search. And his comic book is blowing up, too. Yeah. He talked about his comic book. They talk about the first time. Well, Search remembers his first time that they met. And then D remembers when he first uh, recognized Search. Um, it was such a cool interview. It's up on uh, Grillo's After Shock on YouTube. Also, Grillo's, uh, uh, you know, I got the, the Facebook, I got the website up thanks to Noah, who's doing a phenomenal job, as he always does. Right, Roy? Kid's yes, fucking incredible. Does. Incredible. So the website's up. You can watch it there. I'm going to have merchandising on there. It's grillosaftershockxl.com. And you're going to be able to, you know, I'm going to work some shit out where you can buy T-shirts and shit like that. So it's kind of cool. Things are starting to move. I'm working. I got John Popper said he's going to come on, but he, I got to wait like a week because he's tra he's traveling to uh, San Francisco. Why is he traveling anywhere during this? Well, time? because hey, he's going. He, he's, that's where his family's at. He's, he was stuck in the house, oh. so he said he's just packing the bag and he's just going. Wow. And his wife and his daughter are down there, so he he misses them. So it, he wants to go. Right. Right. You got to use plenty of hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> I I keep this in uh, my 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 pocket when I go down and do my job, which I just found out. Unfortunately, they laid off like four guys. I hear you, man. I mean, and, um, you know, but I'd be, I'd be making 
twice as what I'm making right now if I was on unemployment. But they they kept me so and they expanding my territory. So now I got more shit to worry about. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what's happening with you know. Uh, it's uh, tough, man. They, the first, the government says, "Oh, they're going to pay for everything," and then you know nothing. You know, <laughs> so you got you you got to figure it out yourself. You know how you're going to make it work. I, and we, I, had, I, we had some nice I, things going on. I mean, uh, we we're we we're doing this. You know, they're bringing that mystery science theater three thousand back. I don't know if you know that show. You know, right the on. aliens watching a movie, and uh, so the, the guy is he's going to bring it back. And we were we started, you know, doing the quote, and getting it all together, and then boom, you know, coronavirus. So hopefully it comes back when we come back. You know, it's the only thing you can hope for. Yeah, it's uh, good, Brian. No, I'm just saying, absolutely. Uh, there's there's quite a few productions that have been put on hold, and uh, I know I, I have uh, two films I'll be working on later on this year that we've now pushed back. Obviously, one of them being a Clerks Three, hopefully. Um, so these type of things that get done, you know, you can do only so much in pre-production of calling locations if you need locations and trying to nail down stuff. But once again, dates are just dates are just up in the air. You just don't know how, even when we start reopening. What is available to do? Because, you know, when you're bringing in cast from out of town somewhere, you need hotels to be open. Then they're going to want to eat. So you have to have either a, a hotel that has a restaurant or restaurants around that are open. And then even then, there's not going to be eating in at restaurants for a while until protocols are done. Um, so now you're just eat, doing takeout as much as you can. So it's going to be very slow, especially for the entertainment industry to come back. I mean, you're seeing all these you know, uh, late night hosts of talk shows and they're doing exactly what we're doing. They're pretty much just stream casting their shows. They're sure. fortunate enough to employ their writing teams to be in their offices. They all upgrade their, uh, you know, Broadwood band uh, service to, to down and upload all these massive files. You know, Roy, you know about editing files and how large they can be sometimes. So, sure. and, and uploading them to servers and stuff. So it's, it's kind of tough. And uh, we're definitely testing the, uh, the breaking point of bandwidth uh, in this country. Well, you know, it's going to be a weird button. Go ahead, Roy. I was going to say, do you think that uh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that like when we come back to work, that there's going to be a ton of it because we pretty much exhausted everything that was in the pipeline or will have, you know, and there's going to be this major gap from where people left off with series, dramatic series, comedies, you know, yada, yada. So I, I, I'm hoping that it's going to be like this huge, you know, water, uh, you know, tidal wave of work that comes out. Correct. Of it. I mean, the 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 backlog of content that needs to be created will be there. It literally is just the logistics of getting cast and crew together. Where are you going to shoot? What kind of locations are open to be? You know, and then there's still social distancing. Like, you know, you're still going to need. You know, if you, anybody sees how television and film is done, sometimes crews are right on top of each other. Camera oh yeah. Cameraman, the camera assistant and focus puller, the boom guy is right next to the soundboard, you know, things like that. So it's going to be tough. I mean, in hair and makeup alone, I mean, that's going to be, you know, it's Yeah, I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if like, uh, say like Jimmy Fallon's doing the Tonight Show from home and shit like that. When this is all over, like, what the fuck do we need to have all these people here for? We look, you were doing great when you were home. Just stay there. Yeah, you know? but I, th I find it strange, like when you're watching like Colbert or something and like he's telling a joke and you don't hear that laugh. You know, it's like I, I, I saw the Get Smart, you know, remember the series Get Smart? Well, they made a movie and it didn't have the laugh track in it. And it was like noticeable. You were like, whoa, something's really missing. And I feel that way about the, the late night guys, you know? Yeah, My well, I mean, Bill Maher has gotten smart. He's using, you know, footage, old, uh, you know, footage that you can get from free services. And he's using like old audience kind of laughter tracks on it. Uh, just so that he has something. And um, what's really weird is like Fallon, especially, I don't know where he's living, where that tree house that he's living in, that, that house. He's, he's somewhere down in Gramercy Park. Cause when I lived down there, my ex used to see him all the time. And then right before I moved, I saw him walking down the block. Nicest yeah. guy in the world. So yeah. nice. He's, he's, he's definitely out of the city because I, there was, he just did a show last night and out of his window, you can see a lawn and a road and a field behind him. So he's either in the Hamptons. No, or, no, no, no one said he's in the Hamptons down the, down the block from uh, his Hamptons house. Yeah. That's what I thought. Cause it's, yeah. it's, it's like the a guy doing your uh, show here. It lives in the Hamptons. What's that about? No, no, I can say no one's typing notes to me. No, I know. Okay. But no, he said that he's <laughs> down the block from the, uh, his, his Hamptons house. 
<laughs> That's the joke. <laughs> oh, God. So, Roy, what's going yeah. on with your, with your video? How far along are you? Um, yeah, so... Um, I tell Brian. What I'm doing is uh, because I, I was going out of my mind. I mean, really, like, depressed because of, you know, you're just stuck in the house. And, you know, everything you hear on TV is just, uh just awful. So I decided to get all my... Uh, musician friends together to do a track of uh, We Are the Champions and I'm cutting a video to, to sh uh, with all of the heroic people, you know, the first responders the nurses, the doctors, and blah 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 and it's coming out great, so uh, awesome. I have Al Alex Alexander playing drums you, you know, Dido's uh, guy that you know works for Bruce Springsteen um, I have the uh, uh, Tommy from uh, Brian Adams band is playing keyboards uh, you know, and then I got a lot of the Metropolitan Opera people coming in to do the big you know, because Queen harmonies are stacked, you know, so they're all going to do it from their homes and they are doing it from their homes. Everybody's just sending me the tracks and we're assembling them. And I'm annoying my son to no end because I keep saying, here, take this track and do this, you know, <laughs> and interrupting his day. Yeah, because he's got nothing else better to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the so thing. Come on, great. I just want to, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there for everybody. You know, hopefully. it's, it's really tough. If you didn't uh, quarantine down with equipment, trying to get to places that a sell equipment, like, you know, you were saying you couldn't get into Best Buy or B, uh, trying to order something online is nearly impossible. Apparently, all of Amazon and all the online sites are out of webcams and microphones. Yeah. So, you know, wow. it's kind of weird, but how what things go first. But, yeah, like, trying to get another cam or trying to get another mic. Like toilet tough. paper was the first thing to go. You know, right. but now, now you can get toilet paper real easy. It, oh, really? Is it back? Yeah. No, my friend, my friend just took a picture. There was a giant stack to like the ceiling in one of the uh, – the big, the big supermarkets or whatever. Yeah, some guy was a hoarder for like toilet paper and a bunch of these things, and then he got stuck with it, so he went to take it back, and they said, "No, no, yeah, taking it back." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can wipe your ass for years to come. <laughs> yes, he bought a hundred and thirty multi packs. So the multi pack had eighteen in each pack. He bought a hundred and thirty of them, and he could, and so eBay and all them shut him down, like he couldn't sell them online. So he went back to the supermarkets trying to send them back, and the guys go, "Fuck off! You're not, you're not. You, this is what happens when you order. You gotta either now donate it or whatever, but we're not giving you your money back." Good, assholes. No toilet paper in Los Angeles. Really? Yeah, someone just bought. Uh, just uh, people. People are commenting. Los Angeles. Yeah, go, you, you wonder why there's no toilet paper in Los Angeles? Because everybody's full of shit. <laughs> I call, I always say about Los Angeles is what do you want to hear? I'll tell it to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't worry, I'm gonna call you next week. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that how much did we get of that out there, right? Oh, so ridiculous. Well, Don't is, worry, I have your number. I'm gonna call you. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, so tell the story. Me and Roy are out like it was uh this thing at CBS does is called um, I on the environment, and they invite all environmentally friendly uh, equipment people, like, you know, wear efficient lighting, um, you know, that had other sustainable things for the movie and TV industry. And the head of CBS comes and does a speech about how every, where everybody's great. This is the wonderful thing. And Roy goes up to the guy, the head of CBS, after he gets off the podium. Go ahead, you finish the story, Roy. Well, after, after that, I said to him, I go, yeah, you keep talking about sustainable stuff, but every time I want to bring my LED lights onto your lot, the guys don't want me here because you have a whole uh, garage filled with lights. He goes, well, they have to rent those. <laughs> I went, yeah. oh, okay. So then he took my, the, the funniest part is he had my card in his hand and he goes, I go, oh, okay. Oh, you froze up there, Roy. Hold on. <laughs> it's CBS breaking. <laughs> You just broke up, right? Yeah. So what did he say? Oh, anyway, the guy the guy said, you know, that he would call. And, of course, he never called. But I, I think that's the reason I like the East Coast so much. Because if somebody doesn't like something here, they go, nah, nah, fuck that. No, sorry. Yeah. You know, we got that, we got that, that, too. I get that immediately. Oh, yeah, that's not for us. What was that show? Why, Roy's uh, pinwheeling there. No, what's up? Um, but what, what, it was that show with Kevin Bacon that was on TV. Oh, remember? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, what was it called? It, uh, it, it was on for quite some time. So right? yeah, I, they were shooting on the street. And me and Roy go down. I, you know, our signature move was to uh, go up to the trucks, find the gaffer, and see if the gaffer wanted some uh, demo or something, you know. And um, so we find this gaffer, and he goes, 
Yeah. Yeah. What do you say, Roy? He goes, yeah, I'll never, I'll ne you'll never put a fuck on LED yeah, not, light. Not, not, not on my shows, no, no. Oh, you guys are going, like, this one uses it. He goes, he goes, I don't care. You'll never use it. We'll never use it. Never, ever. I'm telling you the, fucking right the, now. The funniest part of the story is right in the middle of this guy telling me this, Steve comes up in my ear and goes, dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. So uh, oh, anyway, uh, the 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 uh, the fun part of the story was uh, right before uh, a couple weeks before the Super Bowl, uh, Irene said, "Oh, they this uh, show wants ten lights." I go, "What's the name of it?" And she said it, but she didn't say it like exactly the way the name of the show was. And uh, and I went, "Wait a minute, that's that guy," you know. But I think yeah, he had fuck you. moved on. <laughs> what? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so my, one of my favorite Roy McDonald stories is. We're going to this Christmas party, right? And it, this Christmas party was on the second floor, and there was like a guy with a list. He had a list of everybody's name that was on. So he goes, Roy McDonald, he goes, plus one, and he goes, okay, come on, I'll bring you upstairs. And the guy's got a flaming red head of hair, like totally red, red, the reddest you can get. So we get in the elevator, it's packed, and the guy with the clipboard is like nose to nose with Roy, and I go, hey, Roy, you know when you get sushi and then there's the wasabi and is that that pink thing? What is that? And he goes, ginger. <laughs> <laughs> and then right as soon as I said that, went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, like, man. how can I get right to say ginger? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that was fucking funny. So, Brian, uh, the new films that you're uh, going to be doing at the back end of the year, can you talk about any of them? Um, well, one of them is obviously a, a Clerks three. Uh, another one is uh, something I'm hopefully be shooting in England. Uh, it's the uh, the producers of uh, Jason Mewes' film that he did called Madness and the Method, which is out now. If you uh, go on iTunes or Amazon, and that's a great uh, that's a, a movie that Jason Mewes actually directed. It's got Kevin Smith, it's got Danny Trejo, it's got Vinnie Jones, uh, Jaime Camel, and a bunch of other people as well. That's a uh, great cast. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. And so uh, those guys are based out of Derby, England. And so they want to work with me on a film. So it's kind of uh, in, in you, me in a different genre that you normally see me in. So I can't talk more about that. Um, but other films that I did uh, last year that are coming out soon. Uh, this is one called Right Before Your Eyes. And it's no, uh, it's on point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you made the you made the cover, too. That's nice. Yeah, the, the, it's um, it's about uh, a guy who uh, is uh, an out the guy at the bottom. He's an alcoholic. Um, that well, the guy on the screen is an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> and, Sorry, uh, he, he's struggling to get back to sobriety, and I play one of his good friends that tries to get him back to sobriety. And then another film that's coming out soon that I have a small part in is called uh, Shooting Heroin. And uh, Shooting Heroin is about a town in the Midwest that's gotten sick of the uh, opi opioid epidemic and uh, decides to take things into their own hands. So uh, that's going to be coming out soon as well. So otherwise, you know, the, the other movies that I've done, you know, Clerks, Mallrats, Chasing Amy, Dogma, The Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, and Clerks 2, of course, are all films that you can go and, and try to find on uh, Netflix and, and, and Amazon now if you want to go see a bunch of things that I've already done. And then, of course, the cartoon series is always a good, fun thing to watch for six seconds. Where can you find that? Uh, you could probably find that on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, that was me in the cartoon. And then, of course, obviously, the new Jane Silent Bob reboot is the most recent film. Uh, Just saw it. Great, great job, buddy. Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to watch that tonight. Right on. So, yeah. I, is, yeah. has everybody been Zooming with everybody? The, the new normal? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we have a Sunday night regular get together on Zoom that uh, we just shoot the shit. And uh, we're trying to find an app that'll have us do a, a home game poker. So we're, we're working. The oh, there's, there's, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll get that to you. There's a couple of Tom, friends that yeah. I know that are playing poker online. Yeah. Yeah, totally yeah. do. Now that McCoy's has one. Just watch a Jane Child reboot somebody. Oh, my cousin Fran. You know my cousin. You met my cousin Fran, I think. Hi. Yeah, she said she just watched the re reboot today. She says right hi. On. Thank you. That was a lot. My of cousin fun. Fran and Bobby, you met them somewhere. I'm sure. I've met a lot yeah. of people here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, but um, yeah, um, that, that's pretty much it. What's going on? Uh, you know, I I haven't done much. I like I went to go to Best Buy, and they're closed. You know, if you you don't have a if you have TV breaks or your computer breaks, you you can't get anything. I well, got you these, know, I did. The, I, I was able I, to get some uh, equipment at, at Amazon. So okay, that, yeah, that but good. I got these uh, at a T-Mobile that was open. Oh really? Yeah. They sound okay. Yeah, everybody sounds great. Okay. Nice. 
Okay, cool. No, I so I went walking around. It was like shit that I did would thought would be open and deemed essential was not. Yeah. Well, at least booze is because Yeah, well, I, I the, the two over here closed down. I stocked up and I went downtown. Oh, really? Yeah. But you work for a, a liquor distributor. Why should that be? I, well, because <laughs> they, they're not delivering to my house. That's why. <laughs> I was Where's everybody order... been? Uh, your your family's been uh, hunkered down. Everybody's uh, just at my home. My parents or... are my parents are down in Florida. My sister's in the house in Brooklyn. Um, everybody else is just home. My uh, my mother is in Central Jersey, uh, where I grew up uh, my teen year, teenage years, and then uh, my one brother is out in Long Island, um, and my other brother is in Palm Springs, uh, California, where he has a bar called Paul Bar, and he's doing uh, pickup at his because it's a bar restaurant. So he's having a, you know, pickup only uh, between four and eight o'clock in, in uh, Palm Spring. Where, where, where I got my hand sanitizer, uh, the place down in town, it's on Division Street, like off a of canal, like when canal first starts. And yeah. it's, it's called Forget Me Nots. And they turned it into a grocery store. Really? Yeah, they have the, they have the kitchen open. You can get to go food. They, they have uh, food in there. Like I bought Kerrygold uh, butter and a bunch of like salami that they had prepackaged. And they're selling hand sanitizer, cleaning stuff, cat litter, cat food, uh, produce. They have the produce outside. And so, they, so it was really smart. And, they, <laughs> you, and you can go in there and do take out drinks. See, that's the problem. See, Best Buy should be putting food in the fridges they're trying to sell you and then sell the food out of the fridges. There you go. Right. You, you, you can buy a whole stocked fridge. And you, you can... Know, uh, and we you have can a be friend, Ed, and he has a hotel in Palm Springs called The Rendezvous and shut down. I mean, completely. Like He's got rental properties all over the world and uh, nothing. He's not making a nickel. So it, that's bad for him, you know? Yeah, the, the hospitality industry is getting hit the worst, if anything. Um, you know, uh, it's it's tough because you those people employ so many people, and a lot of people are check to check in that industry, and uh, especially when in, if you're in an industry that you live on tips. So bartenders, waiters, waitress, you know, cooks, line cooks, chefs, you know, they they don't make a lot, and they keep us well fed, and it's tough on them, especially uh, during this time. And it's it's not a matter of of months before a lot of these people run out of money. It's just sometimes a matter of days, if not weeks. Yeah, sure. so uh, we uh, I, I've been doing this pretty consistently for the past like two a week and a half. Around at seven o'clock, everybody uh, in New York goes on their roof where they open up their window, and everybody cheers and claps for the the front all the um the front line workers that are out there doing the shit that like like me putting themselves in jeopardy. You know, like the doctors and the nurses and the care practitioners and everybody's out there that's putting themselves out. The whole city erupts in this. Really like, like like clapping and pots and pans and it's just so fucking cool. And it's uh, in my I, video. I put that. I put some of that in my video. You know the. Oh yeah, no, I didn't. No, I, I didn't put the audio in, but I put clips of people being out on their balconies and cheering. And in Italy, they play instruments. It's like it's it's amazing. You know. Yeah, it's out of all this. You know, it's just we're gonna have to just adapt to the new lifestyle. That's the yeah. bottom line. You know, and nothing's gonna be normal after this. You know what I was thinking about? If, if this was the '70s, you know, and and uh, I, you know, I went to high school in the '70s, so I uh, can relate. You would, you wouldn't know what was going on with your friends at all, because wherever somebody landed, unless they called you or something, or you called them on the phone, you wouldn't know if any if anybody was sick or if anybody was dying, or you know, you'd, you'd be so. At least with social media today, we can keep track of 50 or 75 or 100 people that you know and yeah. you know you know but if that one person who doesn't call you all the time you know gets sick or ends up dying god forbid you we wouldn't you wouldn't know anything until it was all over you know well we uh when i lived in, i lived in the bronx during the 70s so i, I grew up fr uh, from uh, 69 to 79 in the 70s uh, in the bronx up in uh, the castle hill area and uh it used to be the grocery store the grocery store is where you found out the, the gossip the, the yep gossip so it was either that or the laundromat you went to the laundromat and found out oh did you hear what miss patrico oh my god mr patrico the, the bar the barber shop yeah well the bar was, the bar was more low-key no, the, the barber shop the barber shop yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's Which, why, like that's why they made movies about it because that was like what that's where you found all your information out I gave myself a, a little trim on both sides today for the first time <laughs> you ventured into that huh my hair, I put the largest, the largest, uh, you know, head to guard on it. 
did it slowly on either side and then would move down. So I went down like three, three sizes before I got it to an area that I liked. And I was like, all right, good. Cause good. It was starting to get a little uh, Bozo the Clownish over here. That I, I don't like, dare attempt this. Crusty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, su I'm surprised you're not white as a ghost at this point. <laughs> Who? You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, my no. hair grows fast, too. And my, you know, so I got grows. nothing. I got no problems. I, I ordered a Floby. I was going to say, the Floby, <laughs> that, that's the way to go. Everybody I laughed. Everybody laughed at the Floby. I talked <laughs> I talked this about this on my, my last show, and, uh, and I said the same thing. I was like, you know, it's too bad that the Floby isn't back because I know they're right now being reprimanded to make ventilators. So, uh, oh, you're right. Back in, yeah. I'm kidding, because it was your vacuum that you hooked the Floby yeah. to. Oh, 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 oh. Remember, it was right, just right. You know, yeah. the head that you put at the end of your vacuum hose, and the, <laughs> the, the action of the sucking is what spun the blades <laughs> that you went over your head with. And so, and then it, 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 and you know, it captured all your hair and into the vacuum. That uh, nasty hose. Yeah. Clip that thing. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. Yeah. It's cleaning but, up the, it's cleaning up the cat litter, and then it's on your fucking head. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's living on some beach property from the Floby, that's for sure. <laughs> I, you know, my mom didn't like. My mom would like cut my hair and shit, and it was never came. It was like the straight line forehead. You know, one time she cut my ear. She, I started snipping. I went, she goes, oh, I go, what? Nothing. And all of a sudden, I just feel like blood trickling down my neck. <laughs> She's like, don't you cry. Don't you cry. I'm like, you just cut, cut my, tip of my ear off. But she had this thing that was so fucking painful. I don't know what it, I don't know if you guys had it. It was like a U shape and it had a razor blade in it. And you take it, you scrape your fucking hair down. And it was like, it was so bad. I go, it hurts. Like, no, it doesn't. Shut up. How about uh, Van Gogh's Aftershock XL? <laughs> <laughs> she needed to sharpen. It was probably just a curved straight razor, and then she just sharpened it. When it's dull, that's when it catches. She was just too cheap to bring me to the barber. <laughs> I can do it myself. What do I got to pay someone else to do it for? <laughs> it's so funny. So yeah. um, let's get back to the uh, streaming stuff. What's, sure. Uh, a, uh, a, something that somebody's watching that it's not getting a lot of press, but is great. Like uh, some series. Star Wars, Star Wars, the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. There you go. <laughs> Did you see what he wrote today, by the way? On Twitter? Oh. Mark Hamill? No. Buddy? He wrote, uh, first time in uh, March, it was the first time in 18 years that there wasn't a school shooting. Yeah, that's that's I, I said that. I said that too. Like I said, mass shootings are down. Yeah, and so was. Uh... Yep. What happened? We lost Roy. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see though in nine months where the uh, birth rate is. Yeah, I know, uh, dude. My girlfriend broke up with me. Uh, Roy broke up with me like right before this happened, like the day the quarantine. She saw it coming, sir. Yeah, she did. Man, it would have been great. She was all. She's awesome. I fucking miss her. But what are you gonna do? Well, Nothing we'll I can do. She was fucking. She was a lot of fun and shit like that. But you know, um, sometimes it's just like you know, you can't do anything right. All of a sudden, this turned into love lines. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I I was dating some girl about a little back, and uh, she 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 was batshit crazy. I'm talking about like. I went to her house and all of a sudden you open up the medicine cabinet and there was nothing but fucking pills. She was like bipolar. So that's the first thing she told me. I was like, I was like, I don't care. Sex was good. So, but, uh, so I, I went to some point, I, you know, it was like, I had to, that was it. I had my fun. And so my mom goes, so are you still seeing that girl? I go, no, mom, that she was fucking batshit crazy. She goes, that's all you date, Steven, is crazy girls. I go, no, mom, anything with a vagina is fucking crazy. She goes, oh yeah. What about me? I went, when I look up in the encyclopedia, crazy, there's your picture. She goes, go fuck yourself, Stephen, and click and hangs up the phone. Buddy, you got you gotta lose half your audience with these type of comments. Yeah. <laughs> you need the female demographic, my friend. You can't yeah. be <laughs> uh, I listen, I, I just I gotta tell the truth. I don't know what else to problem, but <laughs> what else to do, you know? It's uh, uh put the good. shovel down, the hole is deep enough. <laughs> there you go. Yay. Yay. What happened? What happened? I don't know. It's all of a sudden, those yakking away, and boom. Yes, your son is streaming something in your house, and it's taking up the bandwidth. Yeah. 
he probably sure. put like everything on in the world to suck the juice out of that router. <laughs> so what's uh, every what's everybody trending on Pornhub these days? Oh, uh, there's a new uh, series <laughs> by. Uh... <laughs> I'll bet you that shit's up. Yeah, I'm, fi I'm, I'm finding this strange, brother. This strange. <laughs> you know what is uh is up to domestic violence? Yeah, I'm surprised you're not that statistic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, okay, I, no, wait, this is uh, this is this is I, what I'm I, back. Go. This <laughs> my, is what I this is what I made for my dinner wife tonight. Came back, and I'm hearing the conversation in the hallway. I'm like, oh. what's going on? <laughs> yeah, so I, take, I, take, I want to tell you, I, I took a picture of what I made for dinner tonight. Was that steak? Short ribs. Nice. Potatoes and carrots. Oh, really? Yeah. Lovely, sir. I had, I had it cooking uh, since I like around, around one o'clock. Uh, Diane's upstairs breading chicken uh, cutlets, and uh, I'm going to be making a curry sauce to go along with it on top of rice once we're oh, done. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I've, been, uh, I've been cooking like crazy. Uh, I'll, I'll send another thing. Uh, but I, 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 I get creative when I'm cooking. So I like like I'll, I'll show you the other picture from the other night. This was um, uh, I made steak with uh, peppers and onions and mashed potatoes, but it was it's a very colorful. Yeah, I think you put that up on your Instagram. I yeah. Think yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, going out to eat though. I'll tell you. Well, so if I'm, oh, if I'm still in touch with Kevin, yes, we are. We're very much in touch. Uh, he lives on the West Coast though, and I live on the East Coast. So as far as coming over and having a the drink and stuff. Uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, we when did he move out there? Oh, a long time ago. Been up there now, like seventeen years, I want to say. He went mm -hmm. out there pretty early. Oh. Well, Something cheers to him. Is what? everybody? Everybody's uh, got a drink. What's up? Cheers. No, I should have. I should have poured myself a wine before I sat down. But I don't drink wine. But oh, so I was saying, you miss restaurants. Uh, my buddy was uh, my buddy Brian that brings the wine over that just left. He um. He was craving something, and he found that Ruth Chris Steakhouse is open for takeout. Well, of so, course, they just yeah. got twenty million dollars. Yeah, I know. Yeah, five hundred or less employees, and Ruth Chris, who you pay like a hundred and twenty dollars for some of their steaks, is getting twenty million dollar bailout. Wow, yeah. good for looking out the little guy there, buddy. I know that exactly. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. I heard Ruth yeah. Chris. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know. I can't, I, you know, they won't pay for any of my businesses at all. And, the, you know, they said, oh, we're out of money. But then they give them 20 million bucks. Like, exactly. 20 I'm million. for 10 grand. Help me out here, you know. Um, but so, yeah, you got two bone-in fillets and like lobster macaroni and cheese. That's That, that was uh, the other night. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's, if it wasn't for Corona, I would yeah. say invite me up for dinner. Are you yeah. going to do a spinoff podcast, Grillo Grills? <laughs> yeah, Perfect. yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, we'll grilling with Grillo. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it together. We'll call it Brian's Bar and Grillo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, but uh, all right, we got we got we got 15 more minutes before we go upstairs. Can't and, wait. Uh, Ian Brown, yeah. uh, uh, potluck. Someone has said of uh, your Facebook users. Yeah, I know. Uh, that every year, usually Memorial Day, July Fourth weekend, and Labor Day, everybody does a potluck. Everybody makes something and brings it over uh, to the, somebody's site. And everybody sits down and we all like chow down, like a big family style kind of dinner. It's, yeah, you know, it's the other thing too with the campground. I don't know what the hell's going on. So now you're, the bar has been raised on you for what you're going to be bringing to this potluck, sir. Yeah, exactly. definitely. I want well, no, yo, we, uh, me, my sister, my mother. Everything, every time we bring something from the potluck, it, 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 everything's gone. Because I learned how to cook from my mother, so did my sister. So we, we knew how to throw down when it, it's come to the kitchen. When I was a kid, she used to, I was like, it was the only time I could play with a knife or, or fire. So it was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with that. Stab your mom. <laughs> yeah. That's why she's she a, never let you play with it. She's a wonderful woman. She listens to every word that comes out of my mouth on this show. <laughs> Does she? Oh yeah, yeah. So no, she, 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 they got nothing to do. There's, There's nothing she to watching do now. Yeah, she, I think good. she. I think she. I think she finished Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fin. I finished the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that, so that yeah, the, the Zoom has been helping. I was on with my cousins last night. We were all like uh, chatting and laughing and having fun. 
And, and so that's really kind of keeping it, you know, that's what you got to look forward to. It's like Saturday night, you know, you feel the need to, to get drunk, you know, and now, now you can't. <laughs> like so when you, you say, you say that like they may not have the campground, Steve? Hold on, one at a time. Go ahead, oh. go ahead. Roy? What? Go ahead. What were you saying? You guys are, oh, talking said, over uh, are you saying that they may not open the campground? Um, th th there's weird talk about it. So, uh, you know, we don't know when it, it's going to open, if it opens. So, yeah. um, a lot of people are saying, you know, because the campground was sold, it's bought by some fucking corporation now, which is another fucking crazy, scary thing, what's going to happen. So, uh, you know, I, I'll do whatever I can. I'll fight tooth and nail because that's that's my heroin. I have to I have to have that. Right. You know, so uh, I'll fight. I'll do whatever. I'll sell a kid. I'll sell a kidney. I don't care. I, I, <laughs> I, need, I need you know me. I need my time in the woods on the weekends. No, I know. There's so. definitely plenty of places up in that area that you could move your campground, your your specific camper to somewhere else. No, I know. It, it wouldn't be the same. Somebody's asking you a question, Brian. Big fan. Uh, what? Where did you learn of the, the clerk's audition backstage? Question mark. No, uh, actually, I had worked out of the theater that Kevin used down in Atlantic Highlands called the First Avenue Playhouse, which is still operational to this day. Uh, and uh, I had done plays there for like two, three years prior to that. So they went to this is before everybody had cell phones and before the Internet. And so Kevin went to them because he lived in the next town over and said, hey, I'm making this film. I'd like to audition people uh, for this film. And I want to hold auditions here at your uh, theater and uh, can I and so uh, they said sure and then they said well look can you do Kevin's like can you call up your stable of actors of who works out of here to let them know this is going on so a month before the auditions uh, Joe Bagnol uh, one of the owners of uh, the First Avenue Playhouse called my house at home at my mom's house when I was living uh, in Central Jersey and uh, I got the message and I was like sure I was doing a play at another theater during that month <laughs> Totally missed the first night of auditions, went in for the second night of auditions, uh, and then uh, came back for two callbacks at the uh, Leonardo Recreational Center. But yeah, it was um, it was definitely there. So I definitely uh, uh, was not even supposed to be there that day. So <laughs> Yeah, the, the line that will never leave. No, it'll be on <laughs> Right here lies Brian O'Halloran, born, you know, December yeah. 20, 1960. You know, it's, uh, that's the uh, same thing that happened to... Uh, you know the ACDC singer, the second one, right? He went. They said, "Do you want to uh, try out for this band?" And he was in some other band or something. He went down, and it it, it was late already. And he was like, "Ah, should I go over there? I'm not gonna. I don't feel like going over there." And then he said, "Ah, maybe I should just go." And he went over, and then he got the job at ACDC, and you know he wrote uh, all those hits. You know, yeah. took me all night long and all that. You know, so and just that happens. And just to button up that story for that that question, uh, yeah, he yeah. did put an ad in backstage, and he also uh, put an ad in the local New Jersey papers as well. Oh, he and, did. Yeah, and so every Wednesday was always local community theater audition notices would come out on Wednesdays, and in, in like the the Bergen Record and the Asbury Park Press and whatnot. I, so, I actually got I actually got fired from a job, and I wasn't supposed to be there that day. Like I, I literally like I, somebody they called they, the manager called me up and begged me begged me to come in. They had, they had nobody else. This was at Fresco by Scotto, which is like a five-star fancy restaurant. You know, the Scotto family, Rosanna Scotto. And um, the, the brother, who the owner, he's the, he owns it, was in a fucking pitiful mood. Like, he just lost like half a million dollars in the stock market. And so I come in, I don't know this, and he's in a fucking mood. And I'm not supposed to be there. I wasn't supposed to be there. I did them a favor. And I forgot, I forgot to mark a table with a steak knife. You know, you put the steak knife down before the steak comes out. It's called right. marking, marking the table. I forgot to mark the table, and he saw that, and he fired me. And he threw the steak knife at you? No. He, well, he, Savage <laughs> Guinea probably would have, you know? <laughs> so, so You can say that because you're Italian. I can't say stuff like that. <laughs> I, I'm half Italian. I'm half Irish, half embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, what's the Red Bank connection then with all the, you know, them? Does, who lived there or, or was it just a casting, I mean, a location thing? Well, down in Central Jersey, Red Bank is kind of like the artsy part of Central Jersey, uh, of Monmouth County especially. So that's where, like, the comic book store is. That's where the good record store is. That's where, you know, you would go there. Like, my friends would travel, and I lived a half an hour north of Red Bank when we were in high school. And we would travel down there because it had two really good 
you know, comic book stores and hobby stores. And we would go there to have lunch just because also rich people live down in Red Bank. And uh, rich girls sometimes look better than just neighborhood girls. And <laughs> we would go and have lunch and, and just hang out down there and go to the hobby store and then go over to the comic book shop and stuff like that. And Kevin, who lived closer to Red Bank, uh, also did the same thing. That was the comic book store that uh, he would go to to get his comics, his weekly comics and stuff. So uh, that, that comic book store is where I first met you. Right. And so uh, he he then sold to make clerks. He sold his comic book collection to the comic book store. Uh, and then when we made the film and then the film got bought, uh, he took that money and then made an offer to the comic book owner to store the uh, the store owner to buy the store. And so he was able to buy not only his collection back, but the whole store. And if anybody goes to Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash, which he then moved it from Monmouth Street to Broad Street, and the rest is history. And he went on to do his. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm real familiar with Red Bank. My my, uh, my cousins live in Fairhaven, which is the next town over. And uh, you know, my bro my cousin, who's no longer with us, was a fixture at the Brothers Tavern. They could get pizza pie in there too, which is uh, you know right in the corner there. Right now, so, now, yeah. now, now I see the bobbleheads in the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this uh, gay couple uh, got into a big fight, and they're 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 separating. And he's got this bobblehead collection that his partner gave him. And uh, he's like, I just want them out of here. And I go, dude, why don't you let me pay you for them? You know, I, I, you know, and he goes, no, I, I hate him. Take them. <laughs> I said, okay. So I took the, and I have the whole in sync bobblehead collection. <laughs> so do you, do you hit their heads so they can go bye, bye, bye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Justin Timberlake one actually throws money at you. <laughs> uh -huh. And that was my Freddie Mercury doll, and you know, this is like, thank God I put this office together, man. I've been in here for a month, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 your your uh, your booze at a time came right at the right time. My what? Roy, everybody, if you don't know, Roy uh, does like a ninety-one day, no booze, no sugar, oh. no carb kind of thing, which I, I admire him for, uh, amongst many things. I just but, started uh, drinking again. Yeah. yeah so why uh, he he does? It started out as like what, like uh, like uh, Lent. And then you just expanded it. Then I, yeah. then I said, Let, let's do it from the beginning of the year until Holy Thursday. Right. It's, uh, so, it's a dry, dry January kind of thing, right? Yeah, oh. I mean, it's like dry 96 days. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, yeah. It, it ended at the perfect time. You're not kidding. It ended, and then uh, I, and I thought, oh, how long am I going to be in here for? You know? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, yeah, keep talking. I'm just going to start getting ready to go upstairs. You got okay, it. Okay, good. Uh, now this is going to be pretty interesting because he's going to go up to the roof of his place. Correct. Yeah. So what he's going to do is he gets on that. I think he's only like a floor below the roof, right? If yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've so only he, been up to the roof once. And, uh, yeah, same just, here. Same here. Just uh, up there, and he uh, he's right in the heart of uh, Hell's Kitchen, and uh, yeah. you can hear, and I've I've seen his other broadcast before where you can hear the the city erupts with noise and and applause and cheers and and uh, you know and that's awesome and I'm, and that's what these people want to hear. Obviously, they need more PPE and they need more funds to to get people, and they also need people to just stay away from each other so that no no more patients come through their doors. But it's the kind of thing that uh, New York has been doing, London's been doing. It started in Italy, actually. I know in Milan and a few other cities in Italy. Um, and now the the rest of the world has picked up on it. So uh, did did you see that little video that girl did? She her her man. Uh, uh, they were living, you know, they're living together, and uh, it was his birthday, and of course they can't go anywhere. So she mm -hmm. went around to everybody in the apartment building and slipped uh, a note under their door. At, and at seven o'clock, she brought him in the hallway and opened up the window, and they were all singing "Happy Birthday" to him. Oh, that's yeah, awesome! It, it, was, it was, it was touching. And my friend Jay, you know, my my good friend Jay Messina is a very famous uh, recording engineer. He did all the Aerosmith records and uh, Kiss albums and Cheap Trick. And he is a uh, uh, what do you call it? He um, uh, filmed them singing outside or or you know clapping and whatever they're doing. It was amazing because he lives right up on Seventy Fifth in West End. So yeah. Uh, it, 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 really is amazing. it is it is really good i mean uh these guys are really putting their literally putting their lives on the line to ha help people and some of the people who are coming into their hospitals are towards the end and it's kind of there he is i'm back right on. Well, i hate that noise now you hear the ambulance yeah that's never good you know and you got roy this is the first time an ambulance could get down ninth avenue right <laughs> you're not kidding you won't die now well you will when you we'd be, we'd be, we'd be sitting at the bar to be like 
bumper to bumper traffic, and then there's a hospital right down the block, and then the ambulance comes down, and we'd be, we'd be all be like, "You're dead, you're dead, you're dead." Because <laughs> that ambulance is going anywhere. If you're, in a, if you're in the back of a, 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 an ambulance on Friday at 4:30 on Ninth Avenue, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so when did they start this, Steve? Right at, um, I don't. You know what? I just like one day I heard people like clanging around, and I was like, "Holy shit! What the hell's going on?" And then I decided to go like, "This is so cool that uh, I, I might as well just go live because I got such a good backdrop anyway." Yeah, you could see everybody. But what so I want to know is why is it so cold uh, on April eighteenth or whatever it is? Yeah, I know. I, I went out today. It wasn't that bad, but it was just uh, you know you got the communication tower in the background. Verizon yeah. communication. I don't know if anybody doesn't know about that, but uh, it has those background ones. Get a better picture. But, uh, you, you, were, you were probably in a better spot before, brother. It's, it's a thick wall. That's where, like the communication stuff is housed. And so, if it's supposed to withstand a nuclear oh. blast. Oh yeah, that. So that, that you'd always have communication. Yeah. So I worked in there uh, for a while. Hey, wait, there's uh, there's my buddy Brian. Say, where are you? He's in the back over there. All right. Nice. He's so over there. Hey, hi, Brian. <laughs> He's keeping us a safe distance. Yeah. So that's pretty far. But yeah, this is the time every. Oh, you went bad on us, Steve. Stop turning around. No oh boy. He's he was in a good spot for a second. He was. He could have just stood still instead of spinning around like an ice. Yeah. Cake. He can't sit still. I can't stop peace. <laughs> Everybody that's busting Find their ass putting, putting their life on the line for us to survive. This is where this city comes together. Say thank you for what you're out there doing. I'm talking about the policemen, the firemen, the sanitation, the bus drivers, the people in the Dwayne Reeds, the people down at your local store. They're fucking doing this so you can have what you need. So it's a, it's only right that we come together and we do what we're about to do in three minutes. It's like it's such an amazing thing. Uh, what's going on in the city? What's going on in our lives? And it's times like this that just show and prove to everybody who we are, who New York is who Italy is, who we are as human beings, because, you know, this is a time that changed our lives and we're going to always remember what's going on and the good things that happen. And that's the only way we're going to get through this is to keep positivity, fight, survive, and adapt and fucking live. So we're going to see what happens uh, in about two minutes. I love coming up here every day. It's, it's like, hey, you guys, well, what else is there to look forward to now, you know? <laughs> Not much. I, I look my, forward my to six o'clock, <laughs> five thirty. My phone call with Noah. Six o'clock doing the show, and then seven o'clock coming up here and having a good time. Right Where's on, Noah man. right now? Is he in New York or has his parents? No, he, I, he, I think he's uh he's in Connecticut. I think. Look at that. Yeah, I'm on Long Island. Island in a second. There he is, Long, Island. Long Island. He's on Long Island. Can't hear you. Yeah. Where in Long, Long Island? Island? Long Island, Long Island. Long Island. Uh, okay, cool. Out in the yeah. Yeah. Cool. right on. Excellent. Yep. It's amazing, right? Well, the, it's, we're doing like a four camera shoot in uh, with my phone, you know. <laughs> yeah, great. What do you want? You you use the computer, Brian, when in your studio? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm on my laptop, and then um, what I have is uh, a couple of uh, different. You know, I have my. Let me take the. Other camera. So I have a, a mixing board, a sound mixing board, and I have oh, a sec nice. secondary screen. There's my laptop. There's the built-in camera in the laptop. And then uh, I have a bunch of lights around Beautiful. me. I don't nice. see no bright shot lights there. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's funny. That's nice. Looks good. What is yeah. it? I've been collecting stuff for about three, four years. So. Oh, cool. Uh, like in preparation. in anticipation of the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, Brian saw this coming like a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's starting up. Is it starting? Woo! All right. Yeah! <laughs> I'm sure it's louder there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's the one thing I missed about not living in New York City anymore is the fact of, you know, community kind of things like that. So, yeah. It's crazy. Uptown, downtown, east, west, you can hear it bouncing all over the place. It's amazing. Uh, 
It is. Oh, yeah, there you go. I'm hearing people with air horns. <laughs> so Finally, funny. a good use for an air horn. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> is this still going? Yeah. It's hard to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can hear a little bit in the background, but it doesn't hear, it doesn't, you know, it's not yeah. crazy. Surprise, all these young kids in my building, no one comes up here. Wait till the warm weather comes, they'll be up. Yeah. Two, anyway, you don't want to be next two, to them anyway two, now. Two Chinese girls that live across the hall from me. They should be up here with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Once no again, jokes, Steve. You're, you're being good. Six feet. Six feet. <laughs> Still going. Uh, the other day, someone was playing music. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> They're going. Yeah. Well, this is the perfect time to say thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming on. Um, Roy McDonald at brightshot.com. You can go and uh, you can find out the best LED light in the business. You got everybody over at Sterling Assault. My boy Alfie makes all these rings and customized. He has a bunch of stuff online you can order. Or if you want something customized, you can customize it. You got F Shop Talks Tax Management, Richard Prinzi, and everybody up there. They're a bunch of pit bulls. It's, it's still tax season. They extended it. If you haven't done your taxes, I would go reach out to Richard at prinzi.com. And they got Party Bib. We've got my, 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 my masks that I'm giving away. Go to uh, Aftershock, Grillo's Aftershock XL on YouTube and subscribe. Take a picture and send it to me, and we'll see about getting you a mask. I want to get those YouTube uh, followers up, 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 up. I got to have a big YouTube audience. And then, Brian, what do you got going on? You can reach out. I uh, have it up on the screen there at uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Brian C. O'Halloran on Twitter and Instagram and the Brian C. O'Halloran on Facebook. But also, if you want, the uh, the O'Halloran is both on Twitter and Instagram as well. And I'll be doing more shows. And that's on YouTube Live and Facebook Live as well. Let me know. Brian, I'll, make, I'll be sharing when you're on. Not any merch yet. Not any merch okay. yet. No, but I'll, I'll share it you know, when you're broadcasting so people know. I appreciate that, my brother. Yes. Cool. And Roy, I, I, we already got a... Uh, the bright shot in there. Anything else you want to mention? No, I have a, uh, a new uh, website called um, uh, 18 Little Kids in a Van. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> got to it. <laughs> now, that's, why, that's how I like to end the show. Uh, I just want to say thanks, guys. It was a fun hour. Um, I love talking to you guys. Um, we'll do this again at some point, especially if you got something to plug. Always give me a call. I know, Roy, you got a couple of things in the trigger ready to go. So when those things are ready, uh, well, you come on and we'll talk about it. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll, I'll show you the video when I finish it. It should be like in a week or two. So. Okay, that, that I can't wait. That's going to go viral. You know that, right? Oh, well, God, yeah. God forbid. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure and an honor to serve you, to have you on my show and everything like that. So, again, the new goodbye is stay safe. You and your families, uh, nothing but love. Brian, good to see you again, buddy. Good to see you again, Roy. We'll talk again. Okay, man. Bye. Later. Bye-bye.